die roll. Okay, let's get that. So the question is about um, what, so, so what happened here is they roll the die uh, 150 times in a row. If you watch the video, you already know this, it explains it fully. Uh, so I recommend that you watch that. I'm sure it will help you. And they recorded however many times they came up with the numbers one through six. Now we can ask questions about um, you know, what is the experimental probability, which means just what were the results of the experiment? Experimentally, what does it seem like the probability came out to be? And if it seemed like, like if we got 50 sixes out of 150 rolls, could you make some kind of a conclusion from that? Like what? The die is loaded. loaded. The die is loaded. So there's, you know, it's weighted so that uh, it will come up six more often than anything else. All right. So that's, that's why we do things like that. But everything seems to have come up around the same, I don't know, the difference between the sixes and the eight and the threes seems to be quite a big difference, but with 150 rolls and six outcomes, there's gonna be some, some difference there. So um, number 29, the question is asked about uh, rolling an even number. So what is the experimental, meaning the result of the experiment, what's the experimental uh, probability of rolling an even number? <coughs> Time two plus two. Uh -huh, we got even numbers came up 22 times, 4 came up 26 times, 6 came up 30 times. So we add that together, we get, uh, 78. no, 78. Out of 150. We simplify that, here we can simplify down to um, 39. Under 75. That's what so these are divisible by three. three. So thirteen over twenty-five. Okay. So the probability, according to the experiment, of getting an even number would be thirteen out of twenty-five. What would you expect? The ratio to be, what do you expect the probability to be theoretically? Uh, half, right? Theor half of the possible outcomes are even, so uh, three out of six or one out of two, right? There are three ways to get a even number, there are six ways to roll a die, so one half. How close is this to one half? Bigger or, or smaller? Just over. Just barely. Out of 25 times, what would be exactly half? Uh, 12, 12 and a half. So you'd have to roll, roll 12 and a half even numbers, which is impossible, of course. That's about as close as you can be. 13 out of 25, 12 out of 25. That's about what you expect to get uh, as far as even numbers go. Okay. What about odd numbers? If we got 13 out of 25 odd, then what about even? Or sorry, even. What about odd? If we got 13 out of 25 are even. What about odd? 12 out of 25 are odd. They take up the rest of the memory. Rest of, of all the possibilities. So there they are, right around one half as they should be. That's all it's talking about. So that's experimental. This is an experiment that was actually conducted and they recorded the results and we base our numbers on that experiment. Here is theoretical, meaning, well, this is how many ways this can happen, this is how many ways, the number of total outcomes, this is what we should expect. Right. But uh, there's this thing called the law of large numbers, which means if you roll a small number of times, 150 times actually fairly small, uh, especially considering you have six possible outcomes. Um, you, you may see some skewed results like, um, how many times should you get a three if it's exactly right, exactly theoretical? How many times should you get a three out of 150? Well, what is the probability of getting a three? One sixth. One sixth. One sixth. It does, yeah, it does. I don't think it was me. I just want to make sure my iPod's not like freaking out and breaking on. Yeah. 
Yeah, I've been hearing music. Yeah, it's really cool. I, I didn't hear that, but can you hear that? Uh, okay, so uh, one out of six times should be a three, theoretically, uh, that if we conduct an experiment and this happened perfectly, then we should see it how many times? 25 times? Uh, yeah, 25 times. Well, 18 certainly seems not to be, not as close as it should be, and 30 seems to be quite a bit higher than it should be. You should see each number come up 25 times if it happened exactly according to theory. But the law of large numbers says if we conduct this experiment tens and hundreds of thousands of times, we will start to see those ratios go right to where they should be. But you have to conduct a lot of times before the actual experiment matches the theory. Okay. This is not really what happened. All right, that was 29. Other questions? What's the difference between experimental and theoretical? Experimental is based on the experiment, theoretical is based on the <coughs> 18. Okay, you gotta pick four numbers for this lottery from zero to nine. Uh, the order of the number the numbers is important. Is important. Yeah, permutation. Yay! The order is important. <laughs> That's not wrong. <laughs> uh, so we're talking about permutations. Okay, so we're picking numbers from 0 to 9. There's some things that are a little unclear here. Let's assume that uh, the person picking the, uh, the numbers picks like a nine, say, and then they don't pick a nine again. They can't repeat the number again. So it's like number balls, let's say. They pick a nine, all right, that's the first one, then they pick an eight, then they pick a five, and they pick a zero. Okay, that's the winning lottery numbers, okay? And so if they pick nine, eight, you know what I said, five, zero, something like that, you have to have exactly those numbers in exactly that order to win. So we gotta figure out what's wrong with those exact music. So first we gotta figure out how many ways can yeah. we win? What? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how many ways can we win? Five. Wait. One. No. One. Only one. one, right? It's it has to match your ticket. Your ticket is a winner or it's not. There's one way for that to happen. You don't get several possibilities to win, just one. So there there's the numerator, one. One. Out of the total possible numbers that can be picked with this scheme. Nice. Right in that little box right thing right there. Okay. So how many four digit numbers are possible when you pick them from the numbers zero to nine and we can't put them in the back? What's that? Nine. Nine? Just nine? Ten. That's a great lottery. You should enter that or lottery right away. Ten. Or a lot of or four. Nine. 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 <laughs> <laughs> wait until everybody has a seat, because all this happens is we're guessing like crazy and uh, standing in front of people. Yeah, Chance. Wait. Sounds like Chance has the answer. Ten. Why ten? ten. There's ten to just choose from, right? You think of a big fourth and a half. Container with with oh, number of balls in it, zero to nine. There are ten of them. If we have ten to choose from. We're going to take out four of them, and we're going to pick them in a, a way that order is an important thing. So if I one two three four is, is different from two one three four, right? So that's going to be permutations. We're picking four of them. Five thousand and forty. <coughs> better, right? Yeah. Because yeah. we get, if we pick 1, 2, 3, 4, we win in any order that 1, yeah. 2, 3, 4 comes up. So it's 10 C4 instead of 10 P4. 210. 210. 210. 210. 210. 210. 210. 210. 210. 210. 210. 210. 210. 210. 210. 210. 210. 210. 210. 210. 210. 210. 210. 210. 210. 210. 210. 210. 210. 210. 
They wish are bad. They are bad, bad odds, but they're much better than a normal lottery, like a multiple lottery where you have to pick five numbers from numbers from zero to sixty or something like a lot of numbers to pick from. It's very bad odds. Don't play that game. Right. Other questions? Yeah, I don't know what else. I don't know how much detail we can go into on all this. I'll ask you what you got your numbers. 19 over 27? 19 over 26. 26, that's what you came up with, okay. Can you tell us how you got there? Um, the possible amount of cards is 52 minus the base cards. Is Which is how many base cards? Um, 12. 12 total, because you got three in each suit, four suits. Yeah, 12 total. Oh, all right. It's 16. Yep. I got I don't think it's an answer. Minus 12, that's how many uh, base cards there are. I thought we were on two. Yeah. Out of 52. I think I was coming to Okay, so we should, then we should have, what, 40? Right? Yeah, 40. Or 40 out of 52. Yeah. Which we could simplify to 20 out of 26. Which we can simplify. That, uh, yeah, that shouldn't be surprising, right? I mean, how many cards are there in a suit? And how many cards are not base cards? Three. Three. Okay. Wait. Oh, wait, not. I'm just sorry. Okay, not base cards. Confusing <coughs> questions. So. Okay, given the table recording, this table here, recording the results of 150 die rolls, we're familiar with it, it was in the homework, it was in the video, uh, which we all watched, of course. No, you didn't, there have been two views, I watched, looked. <laughs> Can you views. see who's viewed? <laughs> I can't see who's viewed it, but I can see that there are two. So I was one of them, I'm just kidding. Okay. Me too. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, given the table recording the 150 die rolls, what is the experience for Experiments probability of rolling a prime number. One is not a prime number. That's a reminder from last class. One is not a prime number. So, what's the probability of rolling a prime number? 67 out of 150. Okay, and how do we come up with that? Uh, 2, which would be 22, uh -huh. plus 18, uh -huh. plus 24. Uh -huh. And it doesn't reduce. It what? Doesn't it reduce? reduce? Yes. Yeah, 67 is prime. Is prime? I just remembered this morning I had this handy little table in my old number theory book. What is that like a fun class? Yeah, number theory. theory. <coughs> it is a fun class, I recommend it. Where are the tables? There it is. Every time. We're even Every. early. This is good. It's got this cool this cool table back here that tells you. The least prime factor of every number from 1 to 10,000. Well, 1 to 9,999. 9 but 10,000 obviously is not prime, so why would you like that, yeah? It's about why one wouldn't prime. I never really explained it, but I would love to explain that to you. Um, I'm just going to look at 67 real quick. 67 is prime. No prime factors of 67. Okay. Why is one not prime? It's, it's kind of silly. Uh, well, by the way, what's the theoretical probability of coming up with a prime? Three and six, one half. Three and six, one half. Yeah. yeah. They're about five off. Five off? This should, this should be 75, right? One half? Yeah. yeah. So we're. It's close, close to 75. So why is one not prime? Because the definition of prime messes that up. OK, 
Okay, or it messes up the definition of crime. Right. Yeah. Well, no, the definition of crime is um, for, well, no, it's the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. I don't know. Uh, Order of, uh, of arithmetic. Is that all um, integers can be written as a unique product of prime numbers. And it's that word unique that causes an issue. Let's take 24. And let's see what it's a unique product of prime factors is. Um, about 2 times 12. Now well, that's not prime. Let me break that down more. 2 times 2 times 6. Well, that can be broken down some more. 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. There it is. There is a prime factorization of uh, that number. And all numbers have this property. It's called the fundamental theorem of, of, uh, of arithmetic. And the issue with letting 1 be a prime number is uh, here is here is a, a factorization of this number into prime factors, and there's a different one, right? It's a different, like technically a different factorization, and here is a different one, right? And I can make as many different ones as I want by multiplying by one a bunch of times. Right? One is a number; it does have properties. Uh, you know, if I were to multiply by two a bunch of times. It would definitely be different. It would make different numbers. Uh, it would be a different factoriza factorization. But if I allow one to be a prime, um, and I think about this unique product of prime numbers, then it messes this definition up. Okay. So um, it's because of this fundamental theorem of arithmetic that references prime numbers. Uh, that if we allow one to be a prime number, then this would. So why if you, if you say you know, <coughs> why don't we just say for most uses one is prime, but then we'll just say sometimes it's not prime. Then it just causes a big mess. So we just we keep this definition because we like it, I guess, for some reason, and um, and just say prime doesn't fit the definition of primes and just oust them. Zero and one, they're they're like put out of a lot of. Things. They are unique, interesting, unique numbers that do interesting, unique things and have properties all to themselves. Uh, so, in that, you shouldn't feel too bad. That's what I'm saying. Just because they don't get included in some things. All right. It's like you can't divide by zero. It's sad. It's the only number you can't divide by. Except for the fair. But also, it's a very powerful number. Okay. So uh, come around. This is out of eight. But I'm going to go ahead and explain 10.4 again a little bit in a nutshell. Okay. One thing to keep in mind about 10.4 is that we're talking about a single event. Okay. So as we talk about stuff in 10.4, that can get a little confusing because it might sound like two things are happening. But only one thing happens. A single event happens. Okay. One thing. Okay, that's different from 10.5, where we, we have a sequence of events. And that would be that multiple things happen. And we want to know this, what's the probability of those things happening in the sequence. So this is about one thing happening, this is about several things happening. Okay? Um, one key word here is Typically, I wanted to know what's the probability that this happens or this other thing happens. And here, we're worried about what happens, or what's the probability that this thing happens and this thing happens. Okay? Does that make sense? Like rolling a die and rolling a die. Yes, rolling a die and, right. This one would be rolling a, well, picking a king or picking a something else, right? So we're allowed, this. so only one thing happens, but we kind of expand our horizons to multiple outcomes being considered what we call success. So if I'm successful if I pull a king or a spade. Okay, we want to know what's the probability of this or that. Okay. 
Um, the thing that is going to be a little bit confusing is that you'll hear the word and in 10.4, uh, so that might get you a little bit confused. So I'm going to change this word and in this section to then. That's how we're going to read and in 10.5. It's not this and that in the same way that it is in 10.4. It's this happens, then this happens. Okay. Um, what else? Give you a, uh, just a quick snapshot. Um, we really didn't have to go over really up front. So let's just start with 10.4. 10.4 is about uh, uh, disjoint and overlapping events. Disjoint could also be called the mutually exclusive. If one thing's happened, this other thing can't happen. Okay. I'll give you an example. If I, uh, if I flip a heads, in that same event, I couldn't have also flipped a tails. Right? But I could pick a card that is a king and what else? Diamonds. Diamonds. Have we thought a king or a diamond? Right? Okay. Uh, so we talked a little bit about that at the beginning of last class. We just didn't get quite all the way to it. Um, so let's first talk about things that are <coughs> so I flip a coin. Let's start easy. What's the probability of getting a heads or a tails? One out of one. What's that? One out. I'm going to say, like, you win. No. Whether you get a heads or you get a tails. So you have like 100 So 100%. 100%. Yeah. And that, we're just going to take the probability of getting a heads plus the probability of getting a tails, add it together. One is half, the other is half, you add it together, you get one. Right? One in decimal, 100%, 100% chance. 0.5 is 0.5 equals 0.1. Just a one. So one in decimal, 100%. So 100% chance that you'll get one or the other. Probability that you'll get a uh, two or a three. So when you roll a die, I don't know if that was completely clear. Roll a die, you probability you get a two or a three on that. Or a third, you got it. Probability of a two plus the probability of a three is point. Uh, point is not good for this one. Fractions are better. One sixth plus one sixth. Probability of getting a two is one sixth. Probability of getting a three is one sixth. So two sixths, one third. Um, can you describe any other disjoint events? A six or a queen. That six or a queen. Yeah, completely disjoint. There's no overlap there. Any other examples of disjoint or mutually exclusive events? Drive a car or a truck. Uh, if you can't drive both. Probability you'll drive a car or a truck? Well, it's going to be a little bit tough to answer because we don't know what the probability of, of you driving a car or a truck. You own a car, is it going to be a friend's truck? What other kinds of vehicles are there? Yeah. yeah, they are mutually exclusive. You can't drive two kinds of cars at once. Right? How about uh, that it rains or it doesn't rain? What's the probability that it rains or it doesn't rain? 100%. 100%. Or if we want to get technical, is it always 100%? Say precipitate. Probability it precipitates or it doesn't precipitate. Well, precipitation would be anything that falls from the sky, hail, snow, sleet, rain, okay. or it doesn't. So the hundred percent probability that's going to happen. Okay. So they're complementary events. Okay. Um, what else?
So if there's no possibility that this, these two things can happen at the same time, then we call it probability of this one event being two things, these two things, A and B, is zero. What's the probability you get a heads and a tails in one flip? Zero percent. What's the probability you'll get a two and a three when you roll a die? Zero. What's the probability that you'll get a king and a six when you draw a card? Zero. Zero. Okay. So what's an example of something where it's not a 0% chance that something like that would happen, that you could get this. A six in a spade. So thunder. What did you have? It was basically the same thing. Was Ten and a spade. Yeah. King and a club. You should raise your hand. I apologize. It's about a, uh, if you're drawing from a, a deck of cards, a number that's bigger than five and even. Is that, is that mutually exclusive or is that overlapping? Overlap. There's overlap there. What's the overlap in bigger than five and even? <coughs> six, six, eight, eight, ten. 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 Okay. Right. Let's look at an overlapping event and see if we can figure out um, the probability of that happening. Um, let's see. Probability of uh, greater than six or um, an even number. If you're talking about drawing cards out of the deck of 52, what's the probability that the card that you draw is bigger than six or it's even? Think about it, or write it down, or write it down and think about it. So, how do we come up with that then? How do we come up with nine out of 13? Okay, four that are bigger than six, yeah. and four suits, so, so 16, 16 out of 52. 52. Yeah? And then <coughs> 20 out of 52. Yeah, 20 out of 52. And then add them together. So then we get 36 out of 52. And then simplifies down to 30 out of, or, or 9 out of uh, 13. Anybody see anything? Well, that's not necessarily like wrong. We, we went ahead and defined um, just number cards, which would exclude the ace and the face cards. So not not wrong, just a part of defining what oh, we mean. I see. Um, without the face cards or the ace, it's not 52 cards. No, because that's still part of what you could pick, right? Yeah. Still 52 cards there, making the probability out of 52. There's 52 total. Some of them are winners, some of them aren't. So, you're including some of the cards twice. Yes, you're including some of the cards twice. Do you see how that's happening? Yeah. Right? Oh, some yeah. of these 16 are the same cards as some of these 20. So you would have to subtract. Yes. It would just be all of them. You'd so you have to subtract all the 10s and 8s, right? All the 10s and 8s, yeah. How many of those are there? Well, I mean, it would be eight. Uh, eight all together. So there are eight numbers so that are bigger than six. So you add those together, and then so you subtract eight over 52 from 36 over 52? Yes, you would. Okay. So it would be 28 over 52, which is one half. Seven out of No, all, it's not one half. Close. Close. Seven out of 52. Okay, so I'm gonna give you a visual of, of, of what's going on here, all right? So, it's called a Venn diagram, right? You ever seen Venn diagrams before? Mm -hmm. Probably you have. Okay, so here are the greater than six no, cards there. 
And here are the, uh, the even ones here. Okay, in the greater than six category, very specifically, we have things like uh, the seven of clubs. That's a number. <coughs> That's, that is a card that is bigger than seven. And we also have the, um, the nine of hearts. Okay, we got all these cards in that category. Okay, over here, even numbers. We have the two of diamonds. We have the uh, four of uh, spades, right? and any other card that has an even number on it. Right? But in the middle, what do we have? Eight and ten. Eight and ten of all suits. Right? Eight and ten of all the suits. So here's the thing. This uh, circle right here, this guy right here, how many cards are in this circle? Sixteen. Sixteen. Definitely have sixteen. How many cards are in this circle? 20. There's 20 of them. But how many are right here? Eight. Eight. Uh, now, eight out of these 20 are also bigger than six. And eight out of these 16 are also even. Right? Are we getting that? Mm -hmm. yeah. So if I want to count up all the things that are either bigger than six or uh, even, <coughs> if I just add them together, <coughs> if I add, let me show you picture of what we'd be doing. We're going to add the 16, the full circle, we're going to add that to the 20, a full circle of 20 even cards. We're going to add those together. We're going to put those two full circles together. That's what those numbers represent, right? But the mistake here is that part of this is that little, I don't know, I-shaped piece. And part of this full circle is the same piece is the same overlapping piece. So if we just add these together, what we actually wind up with is this thing, this full circle, and this full circle, and we wind up with two of these right, in, the, in the process. Basically, we wind up, if we break it all down, we wind up with this piece and this piece. Okay, We're missing some. We need that middle piece. But if we just add the two full circles together, what we wind up with is that twice. So that's where we subtract one of those little pieces. That's what this is. This is the overlap. Uh, this, this, this is, well, it's, it's that full circle. This is that other full circle with that piece intact. We take one of those pieces away, and now we just have this and this and one of these, which would be the total, including that overlapping piece. So it's very similar to the uh, disjoint or mutually exclusive events, except for when we have the probability of greater than six or even, we get the probability of greater than six plus the probability of even minus the probability of what? What is that overlapping piece? What would we call it? Even and above six? No, they're both things. So uh, greater than six and even. They're both things. Even numbers that are bigger than six. So in general, when we have overlapping events, we take the probability that A will happen, plus the probability that B will happen. But sometimes A and B happen in the same event. We get a thing that's bigger than six and is even. We get a king and a spade, or so on. Uh, so we're going to subtract the probability of and B. <sighs> Could we apply this formula to every situation? Even
disjoint or mutually exclusive event? Yeah. Why is that? Because um, the code would be there could be no over that anywhere. That was the definition of being disjoint or mutually exclusive is that that intersection doesn't exist. There is no overlap. You can't have both of them happen at the same time. So we could, in, we could say this is the formula for all events overlapping and uh, uh, disjoint, because this part would just be zero. ways can I roll these two dice? Twelve ways? Twelve ways. It's like if I just throw them at how many different possible... Does the order matter? Well, uh, yeah, in a way, but it, we wouldn't be using permutations here because we don't exactly do what permutations is. <coughs> Say one of these is red, and the other one is green, this kind of helps us to see. They are two different dice. Okay. So the red one could be one and the green one could be two, or the red one could be two and the green one could be one, right? It's two different things. <coughs> So, and if it helps, imagine you roll the red one and then you roll the green one. Like they have to, they can kind of happen in sequence. 36. 36. There's six ways to roll this one, six ways to roll the second one, multiply together, 36 ways. Uh, let's find the probability that you get, and what we're going to do is roll them, add them up, add up the sum. So find the probability the sum is um, even or less than five. Even or less than five. <coughs> so there's a little bit of work there you got to. Okay, so we're just going to follow the example that we were given here. We want the probability of even or less than five. We're going to add up the probability that it's even plus the probability that it's less than five minus the probability of what? That it's even and less than five. Even and at the same time, it's less than five. Less than five. So what's the probability that we'll get an even number? Yeah, two. You just count them up? Yeah. Okay. So 18 of the 36 numbers are even numbers. How many of them are, we're talking about sums, right? Sums of these numbers. How many of them are less than five? Um, yeah, not very many. Um, right? Uh, yeah. Got four, three, and two. Those are less than five. So six out of the 36. And then how many? are even and less than five. Four. Four, then we got even, uh, even, even, even. Four out of six, so minus four. 36, right? Four out of 36 things are both even and less than five. So we get 16 plus uh, two, right? What did I say 16? 18 plus two, so 20 out of 36, 10 out of 18, 5 out of 9, 5 out of 9. I just want to find the one where it's less than 5. Oh, this one?
just want to remember to think about is it overlapping or disjoint? If it's overlapping, or even if it's disjoint, we always want to remember to subtract the probability that the thing that we do, the, the die that we roll in sum, the card that we pick, whatever, is this and it's this at the same time. It's that overlap of those descriptions. We want to subtract that probability. That probability might be zero if they're disjoint, or it might be uh, not something other than zero if it's not disjoint, if it's overlapping. Okay. Um, so I'm do this. I'm going to show you the video. We're going to look now at 10.5, which would be a sequence of things. This thing happens, then this thing. Help you see why we do what we do because we're going to be multiplying probabilities together, which I think most of you have already done. Why do we do it? Let's, let's look at a video that I think helps us see just why. Just a second. Okay, here we go. And put some sunglasses as well. Half of the sun. Okay, so um, when you watch that video, my question is, what question comes to mind? <coughs> would it be just completely black? Yeah, would it get, if one's 50% and one's 50%, would it get completely, like absolutely blind through two pairs of sunglasses? What would be like 50% of the... What would you, what do you feel like? Do you feel like it would be completely, absolutely no light getting through? No. I do not feel like Okay, so now the question is, how much light does get through? How tinted is it? Well, let's say 0.99%. You think it's going to be 0.999%, really, really close to 50%. Okay, well, let's, let's put that away. Yeah. Well, let's look at the first pair of, uh, let's make this the first, first pair of sunglasses. Okay. Then the light comes through. And the second pair of sunglasses is right here. Believe it or not, this has a lot to do with probability. Okay? So how much light gets through, that's what we want to figure out. Well, here's some light coming at it. How much gets through the first pair of sunglasses? 50%. 50%. Okay, so like two squigglies get through. How much make it through this? Like two sunbeams come at this pair of sunglasses. How many make it through? One. One. Okay, what if we up it to six? Then how many make it through the first pair? Three. Three, and through the one and a half, half squigglies. Okay, so how does, here let's make it uh, eight, so we get four, and then we get two full squigglies. So how does this compare to the original? Like what percentage is it? It's 25%, right? We've got a 50% of the original, right? So we take the original and multiply by 0.5, right? The original is one, right? The entire one amount of sunlight getting through. Then it, 50% of that 50% gets blocked, right? So altogether we get 0.5 times 0.5 equals 0.25 of the light getting through, okay? This is a probability for it, right? No. At the beginning we have all possible outcomes. Right? And then we go through a probability that something will happen, a 50% probability. Right? So let's say instead of going through sunglasses, we want to flip a heads. Right? Is there a 50% chance of getting heads? No. Yeah? Okay. Then we want to go on and get another heads. Right? What's the probability that we'll get two heads in a row? That's the question here. Well, here's all the possibilities. Half of them mean heads, half of them mean tails. Well, only 
We'll only continue to the second thing if we get a heads, right? Which will happen 50% of the time. So we're only looking at 50% of those outcomes. Goat thing? Uh, goat to get a goat or a goat. Oh, I don't know about that. It's, uh, maybe. Okay, so, so after the first event, we're only looking at half of the stuff, right? And then, and then all of these things are heads, right? We get all of these are heads, 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 heads. All that stuff that got left behind is tails. We're not even considering those. If we get tails, we don't continue on to the second thing. Okay? And then, right, only half of the time that we get heads will we get heads again, right? So only half of those things, only half of the time that we continue on will we get heads again. Okay, so half of half. 25% chance of getting two heads in a row. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So when we multiply the probabilities together, we want, a, we want a fraction of a fraction. How do we get fractions of numbers? We multiply them by the fraction of the decimal or whatever number it is. Okay, so let's, let's talk about another example. What's the probability that I'll get... Uh, that I'm going to roll a die. I'm going to roll it twice. Do you see how we have a sequence of events now? When we say and, we really mean then. Then this happens. So the probability of a 2 and, but really reading it, then um, <coughs> an odd number. This and is absolutely 100% different from the and in 10. It means then. So this probability that we will roll a two and then an odd number. How will we calculate it? One, six, times, times, times. One half. Because here's all the possibilities. We're first going to roll a two. Okay, well that's only going to happen one sixth of the time. Right? So then we go on one sixth of the time. That's roughly one sixth. Or so only one-sixth of the total time, we're going to even try and go on and get an odd number. And how often will we get an odd number? Half of the time. Half of that small portion of the time that we even try. So half get. of the sixth. What's that? Half of the sixth. Half of the sixth. Yeah, half of the sixth is one-twelfth. <laughs> so I, I think people get confused about and and or, and they base their whole probability understanding on those two words. But that's not good enough because it can get confusing. Why do we multiply probabilities together? This is why. Because we want one thing to happen, which is only so likely. And I want another thing to happen, which is only so likely, but I'm only going to try and do it after the first thing even happens. Right? So some other part of the time, I'm not even going to try to get the second thing to happen. Okay. Um, Now let's talk about cards. We're going to pick two cards. Okay? And hopefully you're going to say to me that it depends. Okay? Tell me what the thing is. Probability of getting a king. And the, the book will say and, but I'm going to say then. A king, then uh, a spade. It depends if the king is a spade, yeah? It also depends on who you put the king back, right? So that changes it too, okay? Maybe let's make it a little bit easier on ourselves so we don't have too much overlap. Let's, let's, let's just do king and queen. That way we can't have a card that's a king and a queen, okay? So really we can get two depending on if we put it back. Do we have with replacement or without replacement is the, is the language <coughs> that we use. So A, We'll do with replacement. <coughs> so, so that's the probability you'll get a king times the probability you get a queen, you put it back. So it's probability you'll get a king. Four out of 52. One out of 13. Well, it's probability you'll get a queen, and you, you put the king back after you pick the king. So it's like, it's basically like you have two decks of cards that are completely and all the cards that you have. So what's the probability of getting a queen if you got a full fresh deck? 
Four out of 52, one out of 13, one out of 13 squared is. Okay, now what about without replacement? Okay, so the first thing you have a new fresh deck of cards. But here we're looking at the probability of getting a queen, given so that you've already pulled out a king. That would be four, 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 fifty-one. Four. Yes, fifty-one. We've only taken out one king. Not all the kings, just one king. So four out of fifty-one. So we get four out of sixteen times fifty-one is. Six sixty-three? Alright, it's not gonna simplify. Four out of 663 times you'll be able to get this sequence of cards. Alright. Now, this next thing is not a new concept, right? but is trying to put all this stuff together. So if we run out of time, there's there's one question based on probability trees that there's the video it answers. Quite well, okay. Just using different, different scenario, different probabilities. All right. Um, but let's say that uh, that we're gonna flip a coin, okay, and that decides whether or not uh, you, you know, the football team that you're a part of gets to uh, receive the ball. Okay, you get to receive the ball the first kickoff. If you receive the ball the first kickoff, let's say that you're uh, the probability that you'll win, given that you win the coin toss, okay, so you win the coin toss, uh, well that is going to be, let's say, 80%. What's the probability that you'll win given that you lost the coin toss? 20. Well, it, it kind of depends on your, you, I mean, even if you lose a coin toss, if you are a really good team, you could still win. Maybe strangely, you'll be more likely to win. Okay? So it's just maybe 75%. Okay?